my fellow Americans. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended. In the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. Uh, you remember that? You remember the giant mission accomplished banner behind him? Well, of course, George W. coming down decidedly on the wrong side of history in that speech here that said the war in Iraq had ended. But the Iraq war, as we all know, didn't end until December of 2011. You know, last night we bit our tongue when our good friend who was there, we were celebrating, it looks to be a terrific, by the way, library for whatever it's worth, and the, all the living presidents were on the scene at the opening of his presidential library in Dallas, and what by all means accounts to be his attempt to rewrite certain elements of the history of his presidency, and I would say even more so from his biggest supporters, and also for his take when it comes to his administration. I did what I did, and, uh, and historians will ultimately judge those decisions. And history seems to be helping Bush's legacy. I want you to look at these poll numbers, and they came out this week. W's approval rating up to 47 percent, a huge spike here since the end of his administration in January of 2009. And by the way, comparable to approval ratings for our current president. But the question now is, Will the backlash begin? And Andrew, a lot of people are already opining to say time out here. It was one thing that you were quiet for the last couple of years. Don't come back and say, you know what? On second thought, it was a pretty good run. You know, Rich, as we were biting our tongue about the Bush Library opening yesterday and the Bush legacy, others were not. And with all the focus centered on George W. Bush, with the images of him on stage in Dallas yesterday, the chummy chatter among all the ex-presidents, lots of people during their own review of the Bush presidency yesterday, yes, there were positive spins, but also I saw columns ranging from Bush record looks worse and worse to history will not be kind to Bush to Bush was an intellectual simpleton, which might be going over the top. And there were some protests in Dallas as well, including one that featured a well-known face that's actually been on this panel before. I admire these people for standing up and protesting. Now, we're not going to bother reviewing all the possible reasons people might still be angry with Bush or the Bush administration. You likely already know what they are. But there's little argument that the Bush Library is in ways trying to scrub that history a little bit. Take the Decision Points Theater portion of the library as described by WFAA reporter Jonathan Betts. In the Decision Points Theater, visitors face some of Bush's crises, like Hurricane Katrina. Advisors offer guidance, and guests then decide what to do. It's too big. For the local police. It's clearly meant to convey the difficulty of Mr. Bush's decisions. And what's more, in some cases in that section, an image of Mr. Bush appears on the screens and explains why your decision is the wrong one. And the more difficult those decisions appear, maybe the more open you'll be about his presidency, the challenges he faced, and his legacy. Rich? Dominic, do you think the numbers reflect that there's an inevitability when somebody leaves? And let's be fair, President uh, Bush. Uh, he, unlike Dick Cheney, has been very quiet. He hasn't been critical of this sitting president. Um, in the five years of the Obama presidency, I think by all accounts, he's taken the high road in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, so is it just human nature that you remember people fondly? Or is it that people are saying, oh, you know what, the last five years have been tough. Bush years weren't that bad. Which, which do you think it is? I think that once you leave office, what's that saying? Time heals all wounds. Yeah. And I think that with all living American president, Americans want to look back positively, eventually, in the case of this one, and have uh, fond memories. But the longer he's away from office, his numbers may stay about the same. I don't see them going up much more uh, in terms of the positive I'm at all. I'm surprised they were as high as they were, Bill. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a certain percentage of Americans that just couldn't stand George Bush. And I, I think that mm -hmm. that's going to remain, there's, you know, right. staunch liberals are going to feel that way about him. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think other Americans in retrospect think that, that he's, he's a good man, that he was put into a situation. They don't necessarily agree with every decision. Some disagree with Iraq or a lot, lot of things. Um, but I think fundamentally they see him as a good man. And I think that's, that has been enhanced by his quiet in the last five years. You know, I think Bill's right, Andrew. I thought a lot of people say down deep he's not a bad guy, but do you think the second part is that he inherited a bad hand or that he chose to do things, um, obviously Iraq, uh, that, you know, nobody forced him to? He, I'm sorry, he inherited a bad hand? I mean, he had a well, bunch of surplus. 9-11 happened on his watch, right? 9-11 changed surplus. the whole narrative of where we were going to be. I, I think, look, I, I think that, that people 
are low, don't want to criticize him because a the guy's out of office now and you know don't kick somebody while he's down. But also he hasn't done anything that's annoyed anybody in four years or four and a half years. It's it's the same thing with other people. We were talking about Anthony Weiner's numbers. We hadn't heard from him in two years, and his numbers had done fairly well. Hillary Clinton hasn't been in a controversial position in four years since she was on the campaign trail. Her unfavorables will shoot up if she runs for president. Also, when you're out of the spotlight long enough, people tend to forget some of the downsides of what happened under your watch. Yeah, you forget how much Reagan was vilified in office, and, and he glows in the polls. Yeah. But Nixon, he, Nixon's yeah. numbers were back up to yeah. 50, uh, above 50 by the, uh, at the time but of Don, his passing. Don, do you think if you ask the person uh, that doesn't follow this stuff as closely, that they think Iraq, Afghanistan, that's Obama's, uh, and the economy is Obama's, or do they remember, wait a minute, when Obama walked in, TARP had already happened, the market had already gone in the toilet. Uh, he inherited Iraq and Afghanistan. He didn't ask for it. Which, which do you think is going to be more the case, uh, you know, a few years from now? Honestly, Richard, I'm so glad you asked that question in the way that you did. And here's why. Because, you know, if I talk to Bill or Andrew, we have more, or you, we have more information than what the average mm -hmm. person has in you the public. Said me last and, year. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> and if you talk to the average person, they don't pay attention to half of the stuff, 70% of the stuff that we do. With that said, there's no way that the Iraq war gets away from President Bush. Right. Everyone knows that. You mentioned that he might have inherited a bad hand. I think most Americans assume that it's this president that inherited the Titanic. One, right. one last quick point on this. Presidential Library is publicly funded. Keep that in mind, whenever, whatever your judgment on the libraries happen to be. The hell does that have to do well, if they're, if, they're, <laughs> if they're scrubbing history, which I think there's a, there's a solid case that, <laughs> yeah. it, it, particularly in the Bush Library, it's happening. That's happening with our money. They all do. It, I don't yeah. see Monica in the Clinton Library. <laughs> it's a public library. I'm sorry, I it's didn't even public, know. It's publicly funded. It's paid for by the U.S. taxpayers. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We come back at RFL. Um, he may have been the biggest New York political story of the week, but he wasn't the only one. From City Hall to Westchester, and yes, even some more Anthony Weiner. Empire State Politics straight ahead right after this.